This is still the ballot 2023 and we are moving to the economic realities of each state and the debt profile and the effects on the elections of the state. Now joining us to make sense of all of this is Mukta Mohammed, a financial analyst. Uh, Mukta, it's good to have you join us real time in studio. Thank you. As always via Zoom and it's, it's my pleasure to have I you here to, this to evening. See your face. <laughs> You know, we're talking about real time and real transmission time. of results. So this is real time transmission. But quickly, just before we talk about, you know, the debt profile of each of the states, the economic realities of the state in terms of capacity, you know, to perform and what have you. And that's one of the reasons why this election is very important. Unfortunately, we have recorded uh, political apathy across, you know, the entire state of the Federation. And we're still grappling with what could have been responsible for this, you know, apathy, especially when we saw the energy on the 25th of February, different energy entirely. That's how to describe it. So, but before we get to that point, what's your overview of this election? Well, if you look at the pattern when it comes to presidency, we put all our energies to the presidential election. Um, it's no new what we see. And the presidential election normally dictates what will happen in the governorship elections and in a state house of assemblies elections. So um, we, need we need to be enlightening more Nigerians on the importance of every election, especially when it comes to the governorship and the, and the state house of assembly elections. I think it's more, it those should be those elections that um, ordinary Nigerians should be more interested in because it has to do, do with, with them as an individual. But unfortunately, um, I think, again, some people were not happy with the outcome of last election, especially the, most of them came out, they thought their vote would count because of the beavers. Uh, uh, unfortunately, most of them do not have confidence in the system without beavers. And they feel that if beavers wasn't working during the presidential election, they don't think they'll waste their time again because they felt that if beavers was working, that's the, the only assurance that they have that their vote would count. And since beavers had issues and still had issues today, uh, a lot of them are not confident with the process. Mm. So, um, I, mean, I mean, looking at that, moving forward, uh, so we probably have 2027, 20, you know, to prepare for another election. What are the, the lessons that you need, to, you think that we should, uh, you know, pay attention to? What are the things that we need to you know, be looking out for, again, another cycle, election cycle? I think we need to look at the process. We need to improve the process. We've been saying that over years. I think we see in the next election, we're going to improve the process. Unfortunately, we've not seen the uh, improvement in terms of the process. Um, even the, uh, if, you watch, if you listen to the, governor, the presidential aspirant of the Labour Party, he talked about not against the outcome, but mostly against the process. So for me, I think the process is the uh, challenge that we are having. And so we need to see how we can improve the process. And again, we need to let the people know that governance is all about the grassroots. It's very important to vote the candidate of your choice, especially when it comes to the state and uh, local government and uh, also members of the House of Representatives, because those are th that are close to your doorstep. Unfortunately, uh, we've ascribed the president the almighty power we feel that our, the roads in front of our house should be done by the president. We've forgotten that we have members representing us in the House of Representatives, State House of Representatives, and we have a state governor that we should be doing all that. So I think the process will more or less will be on education. Then secondly, we need to improve the process and make it more technological uh, oriented to, to get more people to have um, confidence in the system. Mm. So let, let's begin to, you know, look at the debt profile of, you know, Nigerian state. I'm hoping that we're able uh, to project that figure. Well, we start off with Lagos. Uh, reports are saying that uh, there's been a trail on domestic debt stock. After that, you have Delta State following, which uh, uh, you probably be looking at 272.6 billion naira. Uh, there probably might just be a decrease at the time of 106 billion right there. So Lagos... At uh, the end of the year, you're looking at 780.476 billion naira, followed by Delta State. Uh, that's running quickly. Now, with uh, the IGRL, so if you talk about debt profile, you look at the state as Lagos, and the fact that everyone looks at Lagos as a state that has the capacity to generate, you know, revenue uh, so much. And then why should Lagos be, be on this list? I think um, a state like Lagos should be the one that we see uh, she said, uh, uh, um, we are not too bothered about our debt profile uh, because when you look at the revenue, um, revenue is 
basically the challenge that we have in other states. Um, Lagos, with their debt profile and buy and buy your revenue, um, then you, you, you should be not to be too concerned because the Lagos State internal generated revenue is even the best in the country. Even with the way they've gone about uh, it with the private sector, they have the PPP. So uh, I don't think it's so much of a problem for Lagos. Um, like we said it one time, I said it one time in your program that um, Lagos State need to copy, the federal government might need to copy Lagos State in terms of, um, if you look at the federal government challenge of debt, we, revenue is not even enough to pay debt. But if you look at Lagos State, they have enough revenue coming in to take care of their debt. So uh, debt in itself is not a challenge. Um, no, but, but if you, I'd like to take you on that now, if you say that uh, Lagos State uh, should be emulated, the federal, or that's the center, should copy, uh, you know, the component unit, which is Lagos super precise, uh, because of her IGRO capacity, then how do you also explain the fact that if you look at the statistics from 2022, Lagos State has the high debt profile amongst the 36 states of the federation, including the FCT, uh, you know, by the end of the second quarter, of 2022 then you have to also you don't just look at debt alone then look at revenue if they have not steadily improved their revenue over this uh, over those times they've steadily improved their re revenue and that's why i'm saying that um, it's not so much of a pro problem and when you look at some of the projects in lagos state they are targeted projects that have to deal with in infrastructure that also also generate revenues when you open up those places and you bring businesses into those places so it's a creative system that you have in lagos state if you look at their their profile by by their revenue they are not in the negative um, so that is for me the, um, the, the the good thing about Lagos State their profile but again when it comes to their profile like I said uh, no no country wants uh, uh, is so debt free even the best of best the developed country in the world debt in itself is not a challenge it's hard to do with what are you using those debt for are you using it to deal or pay salaries why is it to build infrastructures that will also contribute to the GDP of the peop of, of the state and also create jobs? That's what we need to look at. Debt is itself is not a bad thing. Every business is all about the world. Global business look for to get debt from banks, and that's why banks are established. They make more money when you come to loan money from them, and then you also use it to generate more money. So it, it's not so much of a problem of the debt profile. What we should be looking at them. Um, if you have how much IGR are they able to generate? With the type of debt that they have that should be the major concern uh, if you also look at igra they're also i mean legal state is also leading in in that direction but my question now is uh comparing the igra and uh, the allocation from the center uh, do you think that the infrastructure that we have uh, can be commensurate to you know the igra they are generating and as well as, you know, every other revenue, whether it's from the center, can you say categorically that the infrastructure in Lagos can be compared to the IGRA of Lagos State? It depends. Um, you see, Lagos State is more or less like a state that has multiple stream of income. So the IGRA is good. The allocation, the federal allocation also is very good. So they, have, they, they also have those tools. Remember again, not to forget that Lagos State may soon become an oil producing state that also will add to their revenue base and in terms of infrastructure you can see they are opening up more infrastructures um, the Fort Mellon Bridge will soon come on stream they also have to open up a lot of roads especially in the Ekbe, um, 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 the deep sea also project will soon be in existence so Lagos State as far as I'm concerned is one of those states that um, should be doing better I, I think if you look at what they get commercially to other states. I think that's what we should be looking at. Say, are they doing more? They, would they, should, they should be doing more with what they are having. Let's, let's just start with the basics and help us understand. Um, because from a layman's point of view, you see someone making so much money and still having to borrow so much. So make us understand why it's so important to be in debt even when you're making so much money. Let's start from there. I'm, I'm so lay. I need to know that. <laughs> That's simple business ethics. You, you, you see, um, you, you don't use your capital and uh, all, your, all your money to start a business mm. because you need to have something to fall back to in case your business is not doing well. Now, debt in itself is to grow your business. Debt is not... The only time debt becomes a challenge is when you are using debt to just feed on your luxury. But if debt is all about debt is all about expansion and growth, and then when you look at Lagos, the debt is all about infrastructure. Now, the debt that they 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 are they are they are they are collecting, they are not collecting those debt to feed on. 
uh, maybe pay salaries, like I said, pay uh, federal um, 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 allowances for political appointees. But most of those debts that they have is targeted at specific projects that have impact on the people. So you don't use all your resources to create projects and don't have a buffer. So the challenge, like I keep saying, is if I am making so much money and I'm living above that the means. money, the base, and I, you know, I mean, I'm making so much money, yet I'm still borrowing, and I'm also in debt. Now, that's where Nigeria as a country comes to. We are making so much money, but we are borrowed so much that what we are making is not even enough to pay our debt. So what Lagos is making is enough to pay up their debt. But like a typical business or any economy, you want to run an economy, you don't run like, you want to start a business now. You don't put all your capital into the business. That's why you see big businesses will say, okay, we need shareholders to come in. We need people to, to be part of that business to create expansion so that the, the burden will not be so much on, 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 on the company. So it's, 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 um, it's just the way business, capitalism is all about using debt to grow. Good schooling. Um, <laughs> on a funny note, someone said, you borrow money so that the people you are borrowing from will be praying for your long life. <laughs> so that you live long to pay. That individual loan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, uh, seriously now. Um, you talked about the, what Lagos is doing differently, which is engaging the private sector to collect these uh, debts and all, to do the, what they are doing in, in Lagos. Some people have criticized that, that apart from the fact that... Um, the feel that the private sector being engaged is a is really private if you know what i mean uh, you know <laughs> okay so it's a consulting uh, kind of thing which shouldn't last forever you know so they have criticized that that it's the bulk of the work that is being done is done by the establishment by the in, uh, the uh, board of internal revenue and the government uh, agencies they are the ones that collect this and Whoever is engaged as a private individual or a private company is just doing the consulting services. So why is there so much need to have this consulting firm uh, like uh, the one that we have in Lagos, having so much grasp in the economy of Lagos? Why does that have to be the case in Lagos? I think it's more of a political decision uh, to do that in Lagos State than an economic decision. Uh, remember what happened in Lagos State is not even just with the consulting in terms of internal generated revenue, even in terms of uh, um, waste handling. It's mm -hmm. all, when you see it, it's all um, handled by politicians. These are their own, they are their own way of rewarding those that help them to come to power. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the way I see it. And I, I don't think it's right, especially when you have, um, like you said, they also have their own establishment that is supposed to go after, but again, they will tell you that sometimes when you leave it in the hands of government, they don't generate the kind of revenue they normally would generate, especially when a government parasite is out there trying to go after um, getting this revenue. So the, 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 the challenge I have with that, like you rightly pointed out, is that you are employing so much in your state IG, um, internal generated revenue, and then you have consultants to carry out those businesses. So what, it doesn't make business sense. I think for me, I think that's one thing they need to improve upon. And then when you look at the percentage that the consultants have to collect and what they are giving back to the government, I think it calls more to be desired. So they need to re-negotiate that or put it back. But unfortunately, I think the political landscape of Lagos State has been like that since um, uh, the inception. And, that's, and they, they can pride themselves that, yes, it's working for us because every year we keep improving in our IGI. Mm. But, but it's working for you, and it could have worked better, you know. But if the federal government or other states need to copy the template of Lagos State, what can they do differently? It will be difficult uh, because most businesses are actually in Lagos State. Mm. Uh, most business headquarters are actually in Lagos State. Not that most businesses really are in Lagos State, but the headquarters are in Lagos State. And you mustn't forget that Lagos State also have enjoyed this thing as once the capital of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So most of the infrastructure that you have in Lagos State, as it stands now, were actually uh, uh, owned by the, I mean, built by the federal government. Yeah. I keep making the instance of the Third Mainland Bridge. Mm. It's built by the federal government. In the, um, almost since 99, that we have uh, 
civilian administration in Lagos State up to recently that they said they are building the Fort Mainland Bridge. We've not seen anything in terms of uh, improving upon that or even building something um, new. So uh, definitely it will be difficult for other states because they don't have the kind of businesses that you have in Lagos State. Lagos State has airport, Lagos State has seaport, Lagos State has a lot of people coming here to do their businesses. It, even what Lagos State is capturing, if by the time Lagos State is able to develop a strategy to even capture the informal sector in Lagos State, via, via making it find its base into their own state allocation, a state revenue, it will be huge. Because now what you see in those uh, businesses that they find their hand, they find their their their, their revenue are less most and in the pharma sector ends up in private pockets rather than government control. So if they improve on that, but in other states they have the challenge and most states in Nigeria the only thing they do is get money from the federation account, pay salaries and do one or two projects. But I really don't understand what is happening in Nigeria. Maybe you know the dynamics, maybe you know the politics behind this and all that. But you find that it shouldn't be only Lagos that should have a port, a working port. We have River State, we have Cross River State that at some point had a free trade zone. The Tinapa was there and all that. These things are not working and it's only working in Lagos. Is it something that Lagos is doing or the negligence on the part of the federal government? I think it's also be when you look at seaport, no state can own a seaport. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it's be unless the federal government give you permission or concession. Like the seaport we have in Lagos is federal Nigerian um, Nigerian Port Authority that owns it, that operates it, uh, and build and operate it. But what Lagos State enjoys is that um, they have some charges that they charge some of those um, companies that do business here. And so that's how they generate. But the value added tax and everything, remember, that still case in court, mm -hmm. still goes to the federal government. So um, what other states have not done? Number one, you need to look at the depth, you know, the deep water sea of some of these states. Those waters are not so deep to, to encourage large vessels to land. So, so that's what dredging, dredging is dredging for. Is all that's about. And, dredging is uh, for. All, when, when you look at that dredging thing, the state government alone cannot decide to dredge the waterways. Remember that we were talking about every waterway in Nigeria belongs to so the federal government. That's why you, you see no state creating any um, state waterways. It all belongs to the federal government. So what Lagos have enjoyed in terms of waterway is when they get permission for the federal government. Remember, even before the Eco Atlantic project was given permission to start, they have to seek permission for the federal government. The federal government have to waive a lot of this. So some of these states are not enjoying those um, privilege, or maybe they are not fighting for it based on political uh, affiliation, or they are not yet ready for it. I think that is majorly the challenge. You mustn't forget. We keep talking about this exclusive list that belongs to the government until today that we had the news that Mr. President has finally um, said that state government can also be able to build power plants on nice and exclusive list of the federal government. So mm -hmm. uh, we talk about resources in other states. Some states have gold, some states have mining, um, but they cannot mine those things because it belongs exclusively to the federal government. So let's even talk about the, the, the exclusive uh, uh, control. I mean, the fact that some of those resources are still within the exclusive list and the fact that uh, there's been a lot of agitation for resource control and so do you think that if states were you know able to uh, control resources their resources there probably would not be uh, you know in all of this issue of debt for instance and also if you look at the IGR in terms of capacity as uh, a lot of states will be doing better so far if you look at the ranking Lagos uh, would be topping the chart followed by all the states and the list is ongoing. You will see Oyo, you will see uh, Ondo State and others. Uh, the list is not very, very impressive. So the question right here is, do you think that if um, we got to a point where we unbundled, we allowed our state government to control their resources and harness you know, the resources that their, uh, their several lands are embedded with, uh, do you think that the issue of death and the IGRA would, no, on the other hand, increase uh, and no, reduce. Uh, no, let's not look at the issue of debt. Like I said, debt is a business scale for capitalism. Okay, so, so, so do you we think look that at the IGI. Okay. The IGI will increase, will definitely improve, especially if the states are creative. Let me give you an instance. For uh, the state or for the federal government? For the states. Okay. Uh, let me give you an instant. On those states, they came up with a, uh, with a, with a scheme to, to cash the informal sector. 
whereby they go there, they pay a particular fixed amount. That's no matter the, the your revenue, no matter your turnover, you pay a particular fixed amount as tax to the government every month. That is a way to capture the informal sector. So that's how they have also been able to boost their internal generated revenue. So you need to be creative, especially by and by. And what they, again, what the Ondo state government also was doing also, was also to see the benefits that they give to the people. And what is the benefit? They tell you that, okay, if you pay this amount as tax, you have a card, then you are entitled to medicals. They created their own health insurance scheme also. So that's a creative way of letting the people know that your tax is not just for us government to pay salaries, for us to buy BB cars and you see them moving about those cars, but also to provide amenities for your well-being, both social and economics. We have to use some of those. that So people will be interested because it's all about what can you give for what I'm giving back. That's why uh, other developed countries in the world work because they see, they say taxpayers' money at work. Mm -hmm. Taxpayers' money is at work. I'm, I just wonder what happens. This exclusive list that we've been hearing, we know states that produce oil, for instance, and everybody enjoys the oil. We know states that have mineral resources that are even that can even fetch us more money in this country. Uh, but we don't seem to hear much about this. What is really going on? Do you have an idea? We have gold, we have other mineral resources, but we don't hear about it. But they are in the exclusive list of the federal government. And these resources are being tapped by but individuals. You must, you, we could say we don't hear about it until when, when the bubble burst, you really begin to hear that government collect some of the state government, like the oil um, states that we're talking about. We never knew they started collecting their 13 percent derivative bill until Wilson Weekend said, "Look, Buhari has been the best. He gave us all our 13 percent derivative fund, so that have been held by previous government, and this is the amount that was accorded to us." Then before we started here, other state government said, "Yes, we collected. We use it for this." Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's what that's what we say. Partnership. The citizens, the citizens need to start asking questions. If we are, and uh, we, we have been, um, I think they are trying to create the non as in the non-mineral producing, non-oil mineral producing states, mm -hmm. how much of this revenue, how much of this we have been able to generate, how much revenue, how much comes back to the state. It's when the citizens start asking questions, the indigenous start asking questions, people that are there doing business start asking questions, then you begin to get to know the feeling that some of these government actually have some money from this. Before now, we don't know what they do with security votes. We used to know that they have security votes. Because people start asking questions. We started seeing security votes as an issue. So definitely, I think, um, until we start asking questions, we won't know. You can't just say this. The federal government does not just mine everything. There's a sharing formula for every resources that comes out from your state. What we are saying is that the sharing formula seems to favor the federal government more than the state. And that's why we are saying, okay, let every state, based on what they produce, let, let them have uh, um, the, the, the largest portion in terms of revenue. And that's why people are complaining that, okay, the value added tax, the amount of value added tax that goes to the federal government is too much because most of these businesses are done in those states. So we, we, those are things that we need to look at. And unfortunately, those are not issues that can be addressed by the state government through project good. It's a constitutional issue. And so... Okay, uh, well, we have our reporter on the field now, Obadji Akpet, so we'll just take a break from you and then uh, uh, talk to Obadji Akpet. He's standing by to give us an update on the elections. Earlier on, he was in Agege. Uh, right now, let's get to know where he is. Obadji, good evening and welcome to the program. Unmute yourself, please. We can't hear you. Obadji, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, okay. So, what's the situation? Where are you right now? And uh, what has transpired since the last time you spoke with us? I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm still right now. And uh, uh, I couldn't sit down right now. Uh, I mean, uh, Obaji, your, your audio is really bad. Uh, I think we'll have to try to rejoin you. Uh, when the audio improves, I don't know if it's from our side or yours, but I think it's from your side. So uh, try to do some adjustments and reconnect with us. Uh, in the meantime, we're still talking with um, a financial expert. That's what I'll say. <laughs> and we're trying to look at what is happening in the States and all that. Nigeria, you know, 
giant of Africa in all ramifications. That's what we should be, even though we are too smart for our own good. But, <laughs> but we still find ourselves in a situation where we're still struggling, you know, financially, uh, our debt profile as we're looking at it, our pay capita, is that how they call it and all pay that? Pay capita. Yeah, yeah. So what are really the issues that are putting us in this, this position that we're finding ourselves? I think GDP, um, based on um, productivity through the GDP, uh, that's why the government will always use the GDP as a yes stick that um, we are borrowing because our GDP allows based on productivity in terms of um, um, what we we we, we, we do earn. we even produce anything? Yeah, well, I mean <laughs> we do. We, we do. We produce oil. <laughs> so, we, we do produce oil. We so, mine oil. That's so. That's all. so uh, um, that is. But like we always tell them, GDP do not pay your debt. Per capita income has to do with the reproductivity on the real sector. Mm -hmm. How much of your citizens have a job and how much do they earn in those jobs? So that is where we have a challenge in Africa. We are very low, comparable to some other con state countries like South Africa, even even Rwanda, even Burundi, Burundi of recent. So it's a big, big challenge in terms of per capita. And per capita has to also do with productivity, like I said. Um, if you have job, but what we see in Nigerians is that most of the jobs are political jobs. What I mean by political job is that um, government see themselves as social, uh, social to they have to employ people based on so that they can use it as, as a yes to say, okay, I employ social number of people when I was a governor of a state, I employ social number instead of okay, I brought this company and this company in terms employ social number of people. This social number of people pay tax and this tax is what we use to develop this state. So that's where the your cap, per capital income. Per capita income has to do with your people. GDP has to do with the larger economy. But what grows the people is their per capita income. And that is what they can use to buy consumables. And those consumables in turn will be what will produce companies and companies will employ people. And once you have the means to buy, then employment keeps getting better. So the challenge we have as a nation, you hit the nail on the head, is the per capita income of every Nigeria. And we have, they say the point we have less than $1. Mm. But the uh, Nigerians and so it's really bad in part but in terms of GDP we must look at our GDP Nigerian GDP when it's high is because product production of crude oil is high mm. when it's low you just look at it the, <laughs> the crude oil it's, it's production sad. is low at the time that we're doing crude oil about them um, I think um, before we're doing about 1.8 million barrel per day by the time we went as low as 900,000 barrel per day, you saw that affect not just our GDP alone, also affect our earning capability. But now we are improving and you see that our GDP is still to improve. Now, that is not the real growth. That is the terms, in terms of the productive growth of the economy. But when you're talking about the productivity of the people, and it's the productivity of the people in an economy that gives the economy uh, more, more, I mean, that makes the economy because the economy itself, you're talking about the prosperity of the people. And so, when the prosperity of the people is low, then your economy is not doing well because when you have high cap, high, high uh, unemployment, especially underemployment, so you, you, you need to work on that. And you can only work on that if you have the amenities, if you are creating those infrastructure businesses are ready to come in. You create a two way exchange system, you attract foreign direct investors, you attract portfolio investors. Everybody wants to come into your economy because they know two things through your economy, especially in our own case. Intellectual property, we, are, we don't have that mm -hmm. um, guiding of people, intellectual properties. That is one. Then secondly, rule of law. All you just need to look at, you just need to look at what happened between the, C, the federal government, the state government, and the CD, CBN in the redesigning of the Naira note, despite Supreme Court judgment, seems to be this plan that disobeyed obedient. So no investor wants to come into your economy. And the world has become a global village mm -hmm. whereby everything that happens in one, everybody knows what is happening in one. And so you cannot immune yourself from those uh, basic issues that grow an economy. I think that basically is our challenge. Some people are of the school of thought that um, some states are not viable enough to stand on their own. So if there's going to be some kind of restructuring in the country and things like this are looked into, some states will, should merge. And we're trying to also look at um, 
uh, the fact that the exclusive list is keeping some things and we don't f seem to feel the impact of these things on the exclusive list, like mining uh, gold and other minerals in Nigeria. We seem to know only about oil and all that. So Mukta, we're back here <laughs> trying to do this as we're trying to wrap up for the next team to come on. Um, do you really think uh, viability of a stitch is enough reason for them to merge with another state and that we, our 36 states is just something that we really don't need? <laughs> you know, that's a very difficult question. You need to look at how these states were created. Mm. They were not created based on economy. They were created, some of them were created because of population, some of them were created because of pressure group. So, uh, for me, that's the challenge that we have. Uh, you're talking about merging. What have we even been able to, uh, what have we been able to achieve? The federal government in terms of maybe merging parastatals that seem to overlap themselves, or not so report is there, they uh, keep talking about doing it, reducing cost, but we are not doing it. About. Talk less of you want to merge a state and a state. But the political side of it, when a politician talks about restructuring, they are talking about what is there for us as a state, not restructuring that. What is ec economy restructuring? Are you talking about economy restructuring? There are a lot of states that will be non-existent today, and that is why some states are fighting. They don't want the. You see the rapid manner, swift response the Supreme Court gave to right, Naira Redesigner. Have you asked yourself? Why have they not given a swift response to the value added tax case that was brought in by River State mm -hmm. and Lagos? So that's telling you that we are not interested in the economic survival of this nation. What we are more interested in is the political entity called Nigeria. So definitely that is the major challenge. Okay, well, um, uh, I would have said let's just stop here, but talk to Nigerians as an economist, as a financial expert, just talk to Nigerians and raise their hopes if it is possible <laughs> because we are, our, our disappointment is in the fact that we are borrowing so much and we might just implode or explode or whatever the term that you might use. So as a final word to Nigerians, uh, give us some hope, please. <laughs> well, the hope we have is that we have the resources. The hope we have is that um, the incoming president-elect, if you look at the manifesto, seems to tick all the buttons, PPP, private sector, removal of subsidy, uh, economy based, based on productivity of the people. And if we're able to do that, we'll be fine. In terms of, uh, I think, what we, two decisions need to be taken. And if we get those two decisions rightly, then we are on the path of economic pros prosperity. Number one, for subsidy. Are we really doing for a subsidy or we are busy improving, uh, creating more people to become wealthy out of our, our, our common wealth? That's a big decision to be taken by the federal government. How can we attract foreign direct investors into this country so that the exchange rate that is becoming so um, gap between the uh, exchange rate, we can earn more effects into the economy? Then not just looking at agriculture, hey, agriculture, agriculture. What is Nigerian competitive advantage in agriculture? Which part of agriculture? If you talk about Ghana, you talk of cocoa. You talk of cocoa, Dubai, you talk of cocoa. You talk about, if you, even in some countries, if you talk of fishery in America, you talk of Alaska. So in Nigeria, let's pick a product that we know our soil is good. We have the people that we can create a, a value chain out of those products. So in the incoming administration, have a lot to do. But for the ordinary Nigerian, I think uh, you know, there's an economy tense that said in the midst of crisis, there's so much opportunity. But you can only take those opportunities if you have these keys. So what I would advise Nigeria is that try to see how you can involve yourself in self-development by and by looking for opportunity. But self-development is not complete without government also supporting. So mm -hmm. government need to create the environment for self-development. And one of those key um, inf infrastructure you need for, for self-development mm -hmm. is power. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mukta Mohammed. I hope if you have a third name, it doesn't start with M. Start with M. Oh, that will be MMM. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. My name is Mohammed Mukhtar Mohammed. So oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's a good MMM that we have here. <laughs> Mukhtar, it's been a pleasure having you on the show today. And you have really educated us in so many ways. And we do hope that um, your positivity it will translate, you know, in the hearts of Nigerians and Nigeria as a country and make us prosper in the coming days. May the manifesto be followed. Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. That's how it's been. We are going to leave the scene now, but we will have um, uh, 
Justin and Maureen take over. The ballot is continuing till midnight and we're hoping that uh, some results will be trickling in. Some other uh, people on the field might have something else to say uh, to us and all that. But we'll be monitoring events. Until then, I'd like to say thank you to you, Mukhtar, for coming on the program. Always a pleasure to be on your station. Thank you so much for being part of the show. And that's it. Uh, it's all right to follow our conversation on all of our social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And it's all right to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle, where we're streaming. My name is Messi Bopo. Have a fantastic evening, and don't think about touching the frequency. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. I'll be here tomorrow morning again. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel, and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.